Hi, I'm Bob Hasegawa, your state senator from the 11th Legislative District, reporting to you from a beautiful Olympia, clear blue skies. We're hitting into the final stretch of the regular session. So I wanted to let you know what's going on, or actually, more appropriately, what's not going on. The uh, Senate Republicans, who are the majority, and the Senate Democrats have uh, not been at the bargaining table together uh, over the budget, which is the big deal that we have to pass out here before session ends, ostensibly. So the uh, Senate Republican budget passed out of the Senate with Republican votes only, and they're in negotiations with House Democrats and the House Democrats have uh, supported their own version of a budget. So the negotiations are basically only two-corner at this point, Senate Republicans and House Democrats. You know, there's not been a whole lot going on, uh, so there's not much to talk about because the Republican version in the Senate is based on no new taxes or no revenue at all. And as you know, we've been cutting the budget for the last six years, three biennia, uh, after the recession, so there's very little left to cut and uh, some of the programs are protected. In fact, about three quarters of the budget is protected against cuts. So we have to look at how we're going to not just finance a maintenance budget, but also increase money for basic education according to the McCleary Act and also include money to implement Initiative 1351, which reduced class sizes that the voters uh, approved last November. So we've got a huge budget problem right now. I don't see any way out of it without raising revenue. And to me, the preferred course would be to uh, make sure that the wealthy corporations and wealthy individuals in the state who are, by the way, getting the most out of our system, should put the most back into the system so that we can continue to build the system and our economy for everybody. So, um, but since there's not much going on, I want to take this quick opportunity to talk a little bit about what our collective vision for our state is. You know, back in the 60s, uh, there was a, a a TV show that pretty much uh, was very influential in my life because it gave us a vision of what society could be. You know, it, it talked about egalitarianism and everybody having the opportunity to strive for their own personal potential. And uh, it, it taught us to dream about what is possible as far as us as a human um, human beings and as a society. And uh, unfortunately, uh, not too long ago, we had uh, a passing away of one of the uh, stars of that show, Star Trek, uh, Leonard Nimoy. And uh, so this is a little bit in homage to him and the vision that that show created. But there's also other folks, uh, George Takei, who's become a national leader in uh, LGBT rights. And uh, what can we say about William Shatner? I don't know. Um, but at any rate, what I want to talk about was the vision and what was, where was society at that point and where are we now? Back in the day, um, we had this grand vision of what, is po what our potential is. You know, uh, it seemed um, limitless our capacity to be able to improve lives for every human being. But it seems like our society has kind of lost that vision and it's, it's become a mad dog scramble. Everybody uh, fighting each other to try and get ahead. Nobody's feeling secure in their jobs. Um, it seems like the corporations are pretty much uh, ruling us. Uh, they have so much money to influence the political process that we just all are just uh, living in fear of where we're going to be tomorrow. You know, will we still have a job? Uh, do our children have expectancy of uh, living in a beautiful world like we have today outside with blue skies and sunshine? But is there going to be enough snow in the mountains to make sure that we're not uh, 
uh, in a drought situation. So at any rate, I just wanted to share a little bit of my um, hope that uh, we can all start dreaming again about what our human potential is and maybe taking a close look at are we going the right direction? Is, is our government uh, being co-opted by too much money in the system, by the corporations? Uh, people complain about being overtaxed and there is some truth to that because there's, the tax burden has been shifted on middle class and low income people, regular folk from the corporations and the wealthy. They're not paying a fraction of what they used to pay back during the Star Trek days. And if they're not paying their fair share and the burden is transferring all onto us, how are we supposed to keep tuition low? How are we supposed to make sure that everybody has a great education? If you look at some of the European economies, um, Germany, for instance, free post-secondary education. Anybody can go to college for free. Of course, they pay higher taxes, but it's what you get for that money. So everybody's provided health care, for instance. Everybody gets paid not just maternity leave, but paternity leave for up to two years. Uh, basic needs are met. So, um, you know, we need to start looking at the rest of the world and seeing what they're accomplishing. Why do we seem to be falling further and further behind? Why do we as middle class families feel like we're living in fear from day to day, whether or not we're gonna still be able to provide for our families tomorrow? So in that sense though, um, I just have to say Star Trek was uh, one of the most influential shows in my life. And uh, so this is my homage to uh, Leonard Nimoy and the cast and crew and uh, Gene Roddenberry. And I just want to close out by saying, Joel Yichu!